Our first scripture lesson tonight comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1 and verses 18 through 25. May we hear God's word together. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took her as his wife and kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, and verses 8 through 20. Again, may we hear God's word together. And in the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And suddenly an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. And it came about, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in haste, and found their way to Mary and to Joseph, and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child, and all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that had been heard and seen just as had been told them. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am so excited and believe with all my heart that the Holy Spirit is with us here tonight. And if we have open hearts and open eyes spiritually, God will reveal himself to us. He desires for us to know him and to experience him in a personal way. We are not to just know of him. He wants, he desires to walk hand in hand with us through life. And he came and he died on the cross, not only to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, but so that we could be with him forever and ever. Think about the fact that salvation is not just forgiveness, it is eternal fellowship with God. I pray that it is your deepest desire to be closer to Jesus, for there is no doubt that he wants to be closer to you. That is his deep desire. You know, the way we celebrate Christmas has a lot to do with what we truly believe about it. If we believe that Christmas is just about celebrations and Santa Claus, if we believe that Christmas is about jingle bells and presents under a tree rather than God coming to us as a baby, then 
we will focus on the wrong things. But if we believe that Christmas is about Christ coming as a babe, we will focus upon Jesus. You know, they say you can tell a lot about a person by the way that person handles three things. Rainy holidays, lost luggage, and tangled Christmas tree lights. I would add to that list another way to tell a lot about a person is the way he or she celebrates Christmas. Someone has written that the people who would rather say happy holidays or use the word Xmas instead of the word Christmas will therefore only know exhaustion, excuses, exchanges, excesses, extravagances, exasperations, and worldly excitement. How much better it is to make Christ the very center of our Christmas. How much better it is to know his love and joy and his happiness and the contentment and peace we have in him. Have we kept Christ in Christmas? You know, on that first Christmas so long ago, there were very few people who believed God's message and were personally blessed by it. There were only a few people who actually made the journey to Bethlehem and arrived at that manger and saw the Holy Child. So too, during this time of year, there will be many people who do not make the journey spiritually to be close to the Christ child. Perhaps they have not fully believed in God's message. Perhaps they have not fully believed that God first made the journey just to be with them. And yet there will be millions of other people who will make that full faith journey in order that they might be with that Christ child and see him in their lives. For them, Christmas is much more than parties and celebration. Christmas cheer from a bottle is not Christmas for them. For them, Christmas is a spiritual event. God came into the world. So God comes to ordinary people just like you and me. And tonight, we're going to hear and explore about how God came to the very first people to see Jesus' birth. And I pray that through them, we'll be able to see ourselves a little bit in our responses. And also, most importantly, that we will see God and his revealed message to us. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, may the wonder of Christmas dwell in my heart through faith and hearing your holy word let us never forget the infant Jesus and the salvation that you offer us through him. Fill our hearts with the presence of the Christ child and the true meaning of Christmas. May we have Christ in our Christmases. In Jesus our Lord we pray. Amen. When we think about the first people who heard that the Savior was going to be born, we tend to imagine that it was Mary or, or Joseph but if we read the scriptures carefully, we realize that the first person who heard about the Messiah's coming was actually the priest, Zacharias. You see, Zacharias was the first one to be told. And he had been chosen by lot to enter the temple and to perform the burning of incense. It may have been the first and the only time in his life that he was allowed to perform this particular ritual, the incense was a sign, a symbol of a prayers of God's people rising up to the heavens. And so it was while he was burning this incense in the temple that suddenly he saw an angel standing at the right side of the altar. And the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. It was here that Zacharias learned that his son would also be the forerunner to the Messiah. Zacharias, a priest, a very religious and righteous person, was actually the first one to hear the good news message. The only problem was this very religious and righteous man who was the first to hear the message doubted that God's 
plan could happen. And so here was Zacharias, the very first one to know that the Messiah was coming, and yet he was one of the last ones to actually witness to that truth because he was made silent. He just couldn't believe until his wife actually had their baby. And so the angel made him silent, and he was unable to speak or tell anybody anything. It was almost as if since he didn't believe... He didn't have really anything important to say about the angel's message until he did believe the angel's message. And then his tongue was opened and he could speak. Friends, if you and I are given God's message, let us believe it and let us speak it to other people, lest we become silent for our lack of belief. You and I can be very religious and perform all the correct rituals, but still not really believe in God's plan in our lives. We can serve faithfully in the church or the temple, if you will. We can be a righteous person by everyone else's standards, and yet not by God's standards. Faith is required for that. Faith is required to please God, it says in the scriptures. Faith is required... At Christmas. If you don't have faith, you can't fully appreciate the Christmas message. Only someone who fully believes fully appreciates. I can still remember as a child staying awake half the night on Christmas Eve at my grandmother's house in great expectation of the coming of Santa Claus. That year, Big snowflakes were coming down from the sky, falling outside so slowly. And the whole night seemed magical. I got up from my bed and I looked out the two-story window to see these beautiful snowflakes just slowly falling to the ground and accumulating very quickly. And I could see off into the distance a radio tower blinking slowly, this red light on and off so calming but through the snow I thought well Rudolph must be needed for Santa Claus and his sleigh because he was going to have to go through a lot of snow so I knew Rudolph was going to be needed that night and then I quickly jumped back into bed and pretended to be asleep I knew that Santa Claus would not come unless I was asleep but could I fool him Maybe if I close my eyes and pretend to be snoring, it will work. I tried that, but then suddenly I remembered something. I remembered that song. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Oh, no. It may be funny now, but there's a lesson here. And the lesson is this. If you can't fool Santa, then friends, you certainly can't fool God. The Lord knows if our faith is asleep or it has been awakened to him. We can't fool him and sleep in doubt. Now, the second person to have been given the good news of Christ was Elizabeth, Zacharias' wife. She must have been informed by him concerning the visions and the message in the temple. Although he couldn't speak, he may have written it out like he did later when he wrote out the name John. We know that she must have been told by someone because when Mary went to visit her, Elizabeth already knew the story. She already knew that Mary was going to be the mother of the Messiah. And when Elizabeth saw Mary, she said Mary was blessed. And she was also blessed for believing, for having faith. And Elizabeth's baby leaped in her womb for joy. Elizabeth and Zacharias had probably been praying all their lives uh, to have a child. And now God was answering those prayers. And yet when God finally answered their prayers, only Elizabeth believed. Zacharias was still doubtful about God's promise, but Elizabeth simply believed that God could do it. How big is your God? How much do you trust in him and believe that he can do all things? 
Elizabeth's heart was focused entirely on these promises, these blessings, not on how God might do or accomplish his plans or how he might keep his promises or the modus operandi. Her faith was focused on God and his promises. What if we could have one Christmas without all the wrapping paper and all the broken toys and clothes that don't fit and, and lines and supermarkets and department stores? I'd really like to have one Christmas when I don't have so many bills to pay in January. I'd like to have one Christmas when I'm not rushed and when I have more time to reflect and pray and believe the message of the Christ child. I would much rather see the answers to the prayers of the people in our congregation and my own prayers than to see or to have to buy more presents for the tree. I want to see God's work among us, not just wrap gifts under a tree. I would be much more excited to hear about God's revelation in someone's life or in my life than another trinket. Now, don't get me wrong. I appreciate a good gift. I appreciate a nice present. But because there are so many things that we have today and so many activities, they can all take us away from the message of Jesus Christ and from his love in our lives. All the reformers, the saints who have gone before us, said that we need to do away with the things in our lives that would take away the worship of Jesus Christ or take away our focus on the Christ child. Martin Luther once said, Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, make thee a bed soft, undefiled, within my heart, that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. The next people to have been given the good news were Mary and then Joseph. The heavenly messenger Gabriel came quite unexpectedly to her, and she was naturally afraid. And the angel told her that she would be with child through not normal relations with a man or some strange union with a divine being, but through the creative power of God, that God would overshadow her and that he would conceive within her a child. The power of creation is always within God's power. That's why we can have new lives in Christ, in fact, because he is the creator. Yet very few people believed in Mary's story, or that she would be the mother of the Messiah. All uh, good Jewesses wanted to be the mother of the Messiah. Even Joseph did not know in the beginning that God was involved and until we read in Matthew's gospel that this angel came in a dream. Imagine how it hit Mary's family that she was with child now before she came together with Joseph, her legal husband, although they had not consummated their marriage. And so God had to intervene in Joseph's life because Mary's story and her circumstances were just too fantastic to believe. And so the angel came to Joseph in a divine dream and revealed to him that the child within Mary was not from normal means, but from the Holy Spirit. And that's when Joseph finally obeyed the voice of God and took Mary to be his wife and went on that long trip to Bethlehem. Now Mary had been told that she would be blessed among all women. And how was she blessed? Well, she had no wedding feast. We don't read that they had any week-long celebration for her in her hometown. Her community apparently uh, didn't celebrate at all. And she had to travel for days by donkey to give birth in a manger because there was no room for her. And she delivered this beautiful baby boy, but she had to place him in a feeding trough for animals. We never read of any other family support either, other than Elizabeth's and, of course, Joseph's. And finally, after the baby was born, Mary and Joseph had a local king after them who set out to kill their child. 
Now, if you and I had been there, it would have been very hard for us to see that Mary and Joseph were blessed. I wonder what advice we would have given them. Do we ever have trouble seeing God's blessings because of all the difficult circumstances that surround us in our lives? Mary and Joseph were still blessed regardless of all their difficulties. And they were blessed for many, many reasons. But for all of this clouded background and the practice and the business of Christmas, the biggest mystery of all and the blessing of all is still this profound message that God has entered the human race to become one of us. That, my friends, is the mystifying core of Christmas. An awesome story that has challenged the hearts and minds of people for over 2,000 years. While everyone else was asking, what child is this? Mary and Joseph already knew. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. So very few people were actually there at the stable and saw the Christ child. And the next people who were told who were there in the stable were some shepherds. God had to supernaturally reveal to them this truth, and they came and found him there. And the next people to hear were the wise men who came from afar, although they just saw the vision of this mysterious star, and they believed that it was of great importance that the king of Judea had been born. And they began their journey to Bethlehem. Next, Simeon and Anna knew who he was, and some domesticated animals happened to see the baby. But who else saw, actually saw this event besides Mary and Joseph and those animals? No one else on earth. That was a strange way indeed for the king of kings to come into this world. But this was God's intentional plan. This was how God chose to come to us. And if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then I would submit to you that it is still very difficult to see the Christ child at Christmas. It's very difficult to get our attention. The Son of God must be revealed supernaturally to us, divinely to us, because there are just too many other fascinating things that tend to draw us away from Him, draw our attention away, and life itself takes us away from the Christ child. And it may sound strange to you, but it may be harder, I think, to find the Christ child at Christmas than at any other time of the year. And even with all of our human efforts at seeing the Christ, those are going to fail without the divine intervention of God that God has to reveal himself to us that it took this divinely appointed star in order to lead the wise men. It took a winged messenger from heaven for the shepherds to finally hear the message and come and see the child. For you see, no matter what else is happening in our world or in our lives personally, God must reveal himself to us. God must reveal the Christ child to you and to me. And if we have received God's revelation, then we have a tremendous responsibility now laid upon us. And we have a mission. We have a divine mission. And that mission is not to argue about his deity. That mission is not to debate his atoning work or his resurrection. That mission is not to deny the authority of the Bible or to water down the truth of his word based upon the newest money-making theories and books and theological bestsellers. Our mission is to do what the shepherds and the wise men did and all the prophets did. Witness. Witness to his truth in our lives. We are to witness to the truth of Jesus Christ in our lives and in our world. When the shepherds had seen the Christ and they saw this humble babe in a manger. 
the scripture indicates that the very first thing they did was made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it, meaning they told more than just Joseph and Mary, all who heard it wondered at the things told them by the shepherds. The Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem and began asking everyone, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? And their question was persistent and bold enough. And finally, it was brought to the attention of King Herod. Simeon also prophesied aloud in the temple concerning the Christ child. And Anna continued to speak of him to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Do we have the qualities of the shepherds and the people like Simeon and Anna who worshipped and told others about Jesus? Are we like Mary and, and Joseph who were conduits of God's grace? who believed and acted upon his promises and the revelation that he had given them? Are we like Elizabeth, who could entirely focus not on how it would happen, but God's promise that it will happen? Or do we doubt and remain in doubt and be silent like Zacharias? I'm so excited about Christmas 2021 because I know Jesus' spirit is here and that he is revealing himself to people who seek him and he's working within us all i have great hopes and expectations in the future because we serve a great god and i pray that you will see the christ child revealed to you by god despite all the secularism and commercialism and unlikely places that he is going to show up after all the christ child may be found still in the most unlikely places and even in the most unlikely place of all a sinner's heart that's the most unlikely place of all to find the Christ child and perhaps just perhaps in this long list that's been going on for millennia you will be the very next person to receive the revelation of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior in your life. So if you would like to come and receive the Christ child, if you would like to see him in your life, if you would like to see the revelation of Jesus, then stand with me as we sing, O come all ye faithful. <laughs>